In this video, you will learn not only how to change a static file path to a relative file path, but why you may want to do so. Relative file paths allow you to share your Alteryx workflow and many other computer programs with anyone else. The file folder construction and the location where I had you save your Alteryx workflow was set up to specifically accommodate a relative file path. You may be familiar with using interactive maps like Waze, Google, and Garmin to provide directions to new destinations. File paths are very similar to driving directions. They tell the program, in our case Alteryx, where to go to find the file we want to work with. I have a typical file path here on my screen. Each part of the file path defined by a slash is a new direction in the journey. For example, turn left here, go right at the stop sign. Embellishing the above file path reveals that this file path has eight parts. Let's become familiar with each part. Along the way, I will link the file path driving directions to help illustrate the difference between static and relative file paths. This first part of the file path refers to a specific starting location that is on my computer. If I were to equate this to driving directions, it would be equivalent to suggesting that everyone driving would need to start at my house. While these driving directions would work very well for me, it wouldn't make sense for my friend Sally Jones to begin her journey by driving from my house. Instead, Sally would want to start the journey from her house, her local hard drive. Similarly, the next part of the file path refers to where on my file directory I save the project. Most important here is that the ideal file structure had you save the Alteryx workflow in the specific folder for this project in the 10k7 subdirect. Again, the static file path would point to not only my computer, but my file folder. If instead we start with a relative position, the subdirectory for 10k7, that would be equivalent to telling Sally to start at her house. Changing the static file path to a relative file path allows Alteryx to find the files on anyone's computer, not just mine, because it's going to remove the reference to anything that identifies me as a particular user. Before I show you how to do this, let's go through the rest of the file path. The final part of the file path refers to the raw data file and the text file that we're importing into Alteryx. This is a piece of the file path that we would want to leave in a relative file path. An important thing to note is that relative file paths can only go into subdirectories of the file folder in which an Alteryx workflow was saved. So, for example, it can move from the 10k7 file directory where we saved our Alteryx workflow into the subdirectory for raw data to find the text file that we want to import. Relative file paths cannot go into parent directories. So again, beginning with the file folder where we saved the Alteryx workflow, 10k7, we cannot use a relative file path to have it go into the parent directories that identify my particular computer. Now that we understand why we want to use a relative file path, and we understand which pieces of the file path should be retained versus those that should be removed in order to achieve a relative file path, let's see how we create this relative file path in Alteryx. Creating a relative file path in Alteryx is relatively straightforward. You just need to remove all of the references to the parts of the file path which refer to a particular user's computer. In addition, you want to remove the part of the file path that is attached to where you have saved the Alteryx workflow. To do so, go ahead and highlight all of the pieces of the file path that refer to the particular computer and the location where the Alteryx workflow was saved, and then hit delete on your keyboard. Once you do so, click anywhere, and you may have to set certain configurations. So go ahead and reset it as a delimited file with none, uncheck the box for the first row contains field names, and then scroll down to verify that your other options, the output file name as a field, the increased field length, the option to treat read errors as warnings, and the code is unit code UTF-8 are still selected. 
And you can use Control S on your keyboard to save your Alteryx workflow and then select Run. Once you've run your Alteryx workflow, you can click on the Input Data tool and then use the Results window to verify that the data has once again been properly imported. While relative file paths allow you to share your Alteryx workflow and many other computer programs with anyone else, there are two additional quick hints related to relative file paths. First, don't forget to use relative file paths on all input and output data tools. Otherwise, the Alteryx workflow will only work for some commands data and not others. Also, you should be aware that zipped file folders change the structure of the file. A good analogy to understand this is a water bottle. A water bottle makes it easy to transport and share water. The zipped file folder does the same thing. When you are ready to drink from a water bottle, you need to open the water bottle by unscrewing the cap. Likewise, you have to unzip the zipped file folder before the files that are contained inside it can be accessed by computer programs properly. Now that you understand file paths and the important differences between static and relative file paths, we can complete the final configuration of our input data tool, importing all of the text files using just one input data tool.